Turning to the phone hacking crisis, you used to be responsible for media ownership rules. Um, these are all obviously going to be looked at again by the Leveson inquiry. Um, what would you like to see? Well, I say it depends partly what the judge-led inquiry comes up with, but I think we've, we have learned from the past that having media moguls dominating the British media is deeply unhelpful, not simply in terms of plurality, but because of the wider impact on the political world. And certainly what I want to see uh, is a set of very clear, unambiguous rules. The rules at the moment are very unclear what plurality means. Clear, unambiguous rules about market shares, that we don't have dominant players, uh, so a presumption sort of limits, of, thresholds. Yes, and a presumption against cross-ownership between press and television. Some would say, look, Rupert Murdoch brought plurality to this country by having television and, and newspapers, and without him we would have had fewer newspapers. The Times may not have existed. The Independent might not have been created. No, I think probably a balanced historical view would say that he has made positive contributions. I don't want to detract from that, but we're dealing with the world as it actually is, where we've had some, a very, very dominant media company, and I think we need to draw the lessons from it, not in any kind of personalised way, but simply in terms of the structure of industry. We need diversity, we need plurality, we need choice, and uh, it's got to come from wider ownership. So Rupert Murdoch's dominance will never happen again? Well, if we get the rules, I mean, not, it isn't simply an issue of Rupert Murdoch. It, you know, there are other big media companies who could have the same influence in future, and we've got to stop that happening. You've just heard what Sir Hugh Ward said um, about uh, his view of the Metropolitan Police at the moment. I mean, are you satisfied with what's going on? I mean, you know, you'd be very critical of you know, the sleazy links you, you described between the media and the police, between you know, the corruption, which is a word that's now been used by yourself, by the Prime Minister, about what's gone on in the Met. Well, I'm certainly very worried about it, because I think, like most people out there, I have tremendous respect for the police. And you know, the vast majority of police officers are completely honest um, and feel you know, anger, I think, about the way they've been let down by people higher up the system. So there does need to be a proper in independent investigation so that you know, if there are bad apples, they do need to be removed from the battle. Now, you famously told uh, the Telegraph undercover reporters, I have declared war on Mr Murdoch. I think we're going to win. Have you won? I, I, don't, I don't see it like that, actually. I did one good thing when I had responsibility for that problem, uh, which was I did make sure that the bid was referred to an independent regulator. There were a lot of, lot of advice just to let it through, and if that had happened, it would now be a fait accompli, but it did go to the regulator. As a result, it was stopped, and as a result, we're in a much healthier position today. Lots of reports this weekend about uh, members of the Liberal Democrats being bullied by News International staff? Is that something you recognise, something you experienced? Well, there was, I don't know how to describe it, heavy lobbying, but perfectly legal. I mean, nobody's suggesting that anything illegal happened on that front. But I, I, I don't want to dwell on the past and my own role in it. What I do want to focus on is reforming the system of competition and takeovers as it applies to the media. So we have a healthier, more plural system in future. Finally, do you believe that uh, News International is a news corporation or a fit and proper organisation, for example, to own its existing stock of B-Sky B? Well, certainly that's a big question to ask in view of what's happened, but it's not, fortunately, it's not for politicians to come to a definitive judgement on that. It's for the regulator. The regulator, as I understand it, Ofcom is now looking at whether they are fit and proper persons to continue to have their share in ownership, and they're the people who, who will come to a decision. Not but wouldn't me. you just prefer it if Rupert Murdoch just pitched his tent and left? No, I'm, I, I'm not personalising it. We've got a process now. They've got to look at that question of fit and proper person, and you know, we'll wait and see what happens.